And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. Rag and Bone Man, an international hit maker, joins us. Learning opportunities available at two incredible academies, a brand new ITL. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. Yeah. Hey everybody, once again, thanks for stopping by. So happy to see you. Uh, we haven't seen you that often recently, so it's always great. Did you say great? It's a Spanish term. Oh, <laughs> G-W-E-A-T, great. Well, <laughs> good choice. Of, good Absolutely. choice. Of, <laughs> we didn't even talk either. So with this just proves we don't coordinate our. our, our Absolutely. Our, <laughs> Shall we get out of this gray mess and uh, go forward? Oh yes. Uh, and there we go. <laughs> Hey gang, thanks for joining us. Uh, shout outs to our incredible sponsors, 1500 or Nothing, yes. the Blackbird Academy, yes. Westlake Pro, yes. Avid, Heaviosity, yes. and Fab Factory. Yes. Let's talk about the two academies really quickly. 1500 or Nothing, as we've been introducing you to, has opened up their beautiful school called the 1500 Sound Academy. And to kick things off, they're offering a set of low cost workshops to start only 50 bucks. Uh, first one's on March 17th. It's called Navigating the Industry with Jay Deal. It's an overview you can use with an industry pro who has worked with folks like Snoop and Gaga and a bunch more. I might do that. Do I get a discount? Uh, probably not. Damn, man, that sounds the, good. The other workshop is on April 6th where Tuff Morgan of Pure Music has a seminar, on, a workshop on publishing. It's called Where's My Money At? <laughs> uh, and this is, if you're a creator, it's really important that you know about publishing. So this will teach you and tell you about it, um, and then you'll be able to make better decisions and, and done by pro. So he's a guy who's done it all, including being a creative person. For more information, be able to sign up, go to 1500sound.academy, and boom, you're in. Uh, we go down all the time and participate. It's gonna be a really great school. One of the all-time leaders in global education, you bet, it's the Blackbird Academy. Um, so mark your calendar down for their openings. April 9th and July 9th, studio engineering classes. I think in the April class they have live as well. Plus they do a very cool thing for high schoolers. Um, they have a five day high school summer camp. Um, and those are July 16th through 20th and August 6th through 10th. What you wanna do is go to theblackbirdacademy.com or contact karma at theblackbirdacademy.com April class, July class, and in the high school camps in July and August. You want to do that. So, learning opportunities, the more you learn, the more money yeah. you make, the better you are. Absolutely. Cool? Absolutely, yeah. We got brand new ITLs, Dave? What do of we got? Of course we do. Um, this is a plug-in that I didn't think I needed, and now that I've got it, I can't do without it. I use it every mix on five or six things. It's amazing. Oh, cool. uh, heaviosity, punish. Punish. Yes. Here we and go. It will punish. Roll it. Punish is a new plug-in from uh, Heaviosity Media, a company that uh, makes incredible stuff. Some of their libraries are as good as it gets. Uh, but there's been a part of the plug-in that had this one little feature, and we all were kind of like, "Damn, wish we had that alone." Well, here it is. It's called Punish, and, and um, I'm going to show you a couple of ways I use it. It's kind of a universally good uh, plug-in. Now, one of the things that I like about it is that it can be subtle and then it can be not so subtle. I like using it in the not so subtle mode. Uh, what does that mean? Well, there's times when you just want more. You want, you want more. I don't know how to describe it. And you're trying to set a feeling. You're trying to set a moment. You're trying to get something aggressive. You've got a track that just needs to be more, uh, needs to contribute a little more to the energy and the emotion of a track, and you just can't get it. Reach for this guy; it will never let you down. Um, so, so let me show you this hi hat part. So this was that. Now, uh, I've done a little bit of work on this hi hat already. Um, um, let me show you what I, what I did already. Uh, here, here's a plugin I love called 
brain works. Uh, just to smooth it out a little bit. And then uh, a little bit of EQ. The EQ is like this. I didn't want heavy to, I didn't want punish to have to deal with this. So that's what we're doing. Let's construct it like I did. So, so, so I'm listening to this, uh, to what I got. And I'm thinking, damn, that's pretty good, you know? Well, turns out it could be beat. So now the compressor section, um, you've got uh, several different methods and modes that you can use. Um, I use all of them. Let me show you. So here's the compression I'm using. Here's a modern console. Ooh, console in bad. You know what? I had it on classic. I like console. And then the, the compressor controls are pretty straightforward. The saturation is worth the price of admission. A lot of times we use saturation and um, we're left with a feeling that it's, it's pretty good, but I want a little more. So check out what I did with this. Here again, you get these choices. I like that one. Now we can increase the drive. Now I'm not doing a tutorial today. What I'm doing is I'm showing you how I use it. There's some great tutorials on the website and there's some great tutorials on YouTube. So I'm just showing you once you, once you get a little bit of knowledge about this, these are some ways to come back and think about things because this setting will work on a, on a lot of, a lot of percussion parts and drum parts. Now watch this. kind of nice so what we would do is we put it in the mix then we set the attack to where it it, it it was just where we wanted to and then here's the equalizer all together now a little bit of volume difference but you kind of get the idea An interesting thing about this plug-in is this thing in the middle. Check this out. Ooh, got in the red. The redder the better. So this controls all these different parts of the plug-in, these four particular, they're all interactive and then this is this is uh, a very important interactive part too. So here again, let's take the whole thing off. You just know that's going to be good. All right. So now hang on a second. I'm going to show you how I use it on, on a, a reverb return. I love punish on vocals. You, 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 you need to be a little subtle with it. But I'm not. I just can't. I just don't have the control. So let's let's check it out. It's a it's a it's a song by my friend uh, Mac with Denim. Uh, check Denim out on Spotify. We got some good stuff up there. So here's the vocal. Love is the way to make the world a better place. I feel like everybody's worried. Okay. Now I I, I love I love the part. I felt like I could just give it a little bit more aggressiveness because when I put it in the track, you'll see why. Well, let's put it in the track and show you what it does. Love is the way to make the world a better place. Better place. I feel like everybody... Now, this is what I wanted to have happen. I'll show you what I did. Love is the way to make the world a better place. Better place. I feel like everybody's worried about the wrong the things. So I'm going to be myself no matter what you call me love is the way to make the world a better place i feel like everybody's worried about the wrong things so i'm gonna be myself no matter what you okay what did i do and why did i do it the compressor in this is 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 a little different than a standard compressor and it's just it's doing something i like to kind of tame it so i chose console on this one love is the way to make the world a better place 
I feel like everybody's worried about the wrong things So I'ma be myself no matter what you call me Love is the way to make the world a better place But you gotta be careful with compressors because sometimes we'll alter the, 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 the timing of a word by making it too long in this case, it worked out just perfect. Love is the way to make the world. Now, saturation. I don't know quite why I started experimenting with it. It just felt to me like it needed something to kind of tie it to the track, I guess you could say. It felt like it felt like the vocal was was not part of the track. Watch this when I, when I bring the saturation in, how it does how it does what we were talking about. Love is the way to make the world a better place. I feel like everybody's worried about the wrong things So I'ma be myself no matter what you call me Love is the way to make the world a better place I feel like everybody's worried about the wrong things So I'ma be my It's kind of cool. Now we're going to come back to transients. Did a little EQ on it. Couldn't control myself. Love is the way to make the world a better place I feel like everybody's worried about the wrong things So I'ma be myself so if you've got if you've got a part that uh, that maybe the consonants aren't coming through, you might experiment with a transit on a vocal. It, it, you got to be careful because it can be it can be a little dangerous. Love is the way to make the world a better place. So let's listen to the being better. Love is the way to make the world a better place. Love is the way to make the world a better place. You can see it. It just it just grabs that. Buh sound and kind of like consonants, you know. Okay, uh, one of the things I like using Punish on is uh, reverb returns. Um, the same vocal that we were working on a little earlier. Let's check it out. We've got a, a reverb and we're putting it right after the reverb. Here's without it. Love is the way to make the world a better place. With it. Love is the way to make the world a better place. It just feels to me, and I could be wrong, tell me if I am, it just feels to me like it just kind of moved it forward a little bit into the mix, but still did what you want a reverb to do. Let me solo it so you can hear it a little better. Love is the way to make the world a better place. Love is the way to make the world a better place. I feel like everybody's worried about the wrong things. Love is the way to make the world a better place. I feel like everybody's. I don't know if you can hear it. It's, it's here again. It's a little bit subtle. I think you can hear it. Uh, it just adds something to the reverb. So we, we've got punish on the vocal. We got punish on the reverb. Check it out. It's a great plug-in. Find new uses for it. Um, um, I find that I need it when I just, when I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm feeling like, man, it could be better, it could be better, what does it need? And, and I try punishing, it works every time for me. Check it out, great plug-in, worth the money. How about this, five different singles by five different artists in five different territories in four consecutive years. Talk about Mr. International. Please welcome to the desk, Jamie Hartman. Good How are to you, man? Good, 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 good to see you. Good, 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 good. Thanks for having me on. So this you. international thing, is, this, it, is it by design or just? Well, as you can tell, I'm from Wisconsin. Absolutely. So, uh, it was a bit of a, a hike for me. Absolutely. To go to Germany and, and then to Sweden. Cows, yeah. Did you rhythm thing? Um, no, I'm from London mm -hmm. um, and started in Europe. I've been out here in uh, LA for seven years, but I do a lot of stuff backwards and forwards. I've been a songwriter for the last 30 mm. years mm. You're and, um, and started producing a lot more in the last five to, to 10 years. And it just so happens that I've been working with a bunch of different artists in a bunch of different territories. The great thing about LA is that you get everybody coming through. Exactly. And also, my uh, my kids love to see their grandparents, so we go back to the UK. So I then I just you know I run around Europe and trying to make records with people out there. So I ended up having a. It's what it was is, it's five different artists. Uh, and each of them was single of the year that year for whatever reason, which was great in different territories and different, you know, different songs, which is, which I was very grateful for. Yeah. We were talking about it uh, just off, off before. Yeah. 
I'm a very late developer, you know. I wanted this or thought all this was going to happen 25 years ago. Right, but, right. you know, here we are, so I'll yeah. take it. Well, listen, you're I'll talking to two late ones, too. Because uh, it was I've Denmark, developed. Sweden, Thank you, Germany. Yeah, Denmark, Sweden, Germany. That's good. I yeah. can't believe you remember the three of them. Yeah. Denmark, Sweden, Germany, uh, and then uh, two, in Germany, two, two in Germany, Australia, and then uh, the UK. UK as well. So, UK. Gotcha. I got a question for you. That's, I guess that's why we're here. <laughs> that's a bit redundant. Sorry. I can't figure out why human is not a number one record in America on the pop charts. That's, sure. that's my favorite song of 2017 and still my favorite song this year. What is it about that song that, that didn't catch on in America? Uh, it's incredible. If you guys get a chance to go hear it, oh, don't wait. Go, well, wait, wait an hour and then go hear it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's one Thank of the you. best songs ever written and, and performed flawlessly and should have been as big as Take Me to Church Thank in, you. in America. Thank it's you. the I same type it. of song, inspirational. Yeah, very well, much Why so, do you yeah. think it didn't happen? Was it a label problem? Was it a timing problem? I don't want to point fingers. I, I, you so know, it was a label um, problem. It was a label issue. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I just think it's one of those things where in right now there's a lot of great pop music, great, great pop music. And for me, that record is a slightly different take on it. And yeah, Take Me to Church is, is very much, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for, for the comparison. Mm -hmm. But you know, you love it. It's just been non it's just, just been made Brit single of the year in the UK. Wow. It's up for an Ivor Novello, I think. Please God, if, we got, if we're lucky this yeah. year. So I, I mean, I've also it's, learned, it's, and been doing the long game, sometimes it takes a minute. It's so good, you know? it's so good. It was written in 2015, yeah. it was released in 2016, it was a big record in 2017, but it's record of the year in 2018. Yeah, yeah. love Britain. <laughs> That's the long tail. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, again, talking about sort of the international side of it. These days, I find that any territory can break a record. Or, uh, there are certainly territories outside of the US mm -hmm. where, where mm -hmm. things are coming out. Um, I remember the Gautier record being very big in Australia before Absolutely. it came out here. Yeah. You know, Lord, I used to know. Lord from, from, from New Zealand. Um, and human was a hit for, it was already had been number one for 10 weeks in Germany before Radio 1 in the UK even started playing it. They yeah. would, it hadn't been, you know, they just, it takes a minute. <laughs> I, think these that's days. A, I think that's instructive of a world that's affected by the internet. You're going to be able to compartmentalize and target a certain place and have it go and it, it'll spread organically and sometimes not spread. But yeah. The idea of, you know, back in the day, you controlled launches. There was a U, there was a United States launch and then a global launch, yeah. and you targeted. But now it, it's just yeah. different. But you know what? If somebody may have Very thought true. to themselves, or could have thought in, in the same way that they do with a, an artist like Justin Bieber, mm -hmm. the Despacito record was mm -hmm. huge globally yeah, yeah. with Justin. Absolutely. And then it came back full circle and Louis Fonsi got the credit he deserved for doing that record as yeah. an artist. So it's interesting, you know, maybe it needed another pair mm -hmm. of hands Absolutely. involved in human. Maybe Chris Stapleton could have done it as a mm -hmm. duet with him out here mm -hmm. and it could have been a thing. You never know. You never know. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I appreciate that you know about it. I'm very grateful for the, for the, uh, no, it's, for the uh, attention. Yeah, I, I it hadn't hurt you. If you're <laughs> alive, I don't That's see great. how, you, and, and you have a little bit of an internet uh, interest, I just don't see how you could have missed that song. It was just, it's, Bob it could still, it could still go to number one. It, it reached a couple of number one charts here. Let's be fair, yeah. but those weren't the, the, you know, yeah. the main chart. Yeah, in yeah. your in your process, um, particularly as a writer, um, you have an avid interest in vocal production. Yes, and that feels to me like a way that, as a producer of your songs or, or other people's songs, that you want to make sure that vocal production is getting across 100%. the essence. So tell us, tell us your interest and, and why. Well, I started off when I was a kid, uh, you know, 15, 16 years old. The first sort of musical experience I had outside of teaching myself a few bits of instruments and, uh, was doing close harmony mm -hmm. because I saw a movie which I probably most people never have seen called American Hot Wax, which mm -hmm. is sure. based around three or four guys standing on a street corner and just singing in harmony. And it does, you know, you have those moments which you say, well, that's one of the reasons I started doing this. Sure. Sam Cooke was one for mm -hmm. me. The Rolling Stones were another. Mm -hmm. And seeing that movie and seeing that close part, listening to that close part, close harmony was yeah. the other thing for me. Mm -hmm. So from when I was young, I always wanted to do that. And I, and I started singing, but it wasn't until I moved to New York back in the late 90s, mm -hmm. uh, just on a, you know, just sleeping on people's couches. And I started doing some jingle work. 
And when I was there, I was asked to sing on this jingle. And I went into the room with Bobby and Billy Alessi, the mm. Alessi brothers, mm -hmm. who um, asked me to sing in on this, to be one of the guys' session singers on, on their thing. And the way they stacked and created this were. sound, this, this quality, this, the, what they did with a simple song mm -hmm. and how they transformed certain sections of it and built the dynamic around it was truly just, it was inspiring to mm -hmm. me. I, I learned so much about, not just about your basic third, thirds, your fifths, your, your lower uh, harmonies, uh, but stacking harmonies, mm -hmm. the way um, you would add certain discords to certain, just to make things sound totally mm -hmm. different than you would ever expect. I was mm -hmm. like, is that going to work? Oh my God. And you listen to, listen to it back. Mm -hmm. And when you create the sonic palette and then you, do, you actually spread that out wide across the stereo field, the way that, just the way it, it gets through. you. It gets, yeah. and, it, and that informed human. I had this record, um, which was the, the, the big record for me in, in Australia, um, one of the ones that we were talking about. It's yeah. a song called Start Again by an artist called Conrad Sewell. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you may know him. He did it. He's the singer on a, a big hit worldwide called Firestone with an artist called Kygo. Mm -hmm. But sure. Conrad is the vocalist and the singer in that. And I sing across four octaves. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can sound like a strangled cat in the high end. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I, and I go super, super low. I will stack and I'll create a lot of the body of what's going on in, in you know, in a chorus mm -hmm. or in certain sections of a, of a record myself and then bring in other singers to sweeten it up and create variety. For, I did that for Human, I did the vocal production on Human and then a lot of that Rory. is behind me, is, is me singing behind Rory. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Same with Conrad. Yeah. And then I'll, you know, if, if there's notes I can't reach, which are, there are a few, yeah. then I'll get some other people in just, as I said, to, to vary it a bit. Sure. But it's very much that, that group thing, which I think Sam Smith has obviously helped to sure. to create a, a, a forum for that. I, I love harmonies. I'm a sucker for harmonies, and but I, I, I'm not familiar with the term. I, I've heard it before, but I don't know the difference between a, a root third fifth and a close harmony. What, when you say close harmony, I know so I should know this. When well, for example, that they're simply a tone apart, which shouldn't necessarily like a half step apart. Uh, usually, a whole tone. usually a tone apart. You know, you're, it's just within that range. Well, for example, it's, I mean, it's the, the simplest way that I'm elucidating that is the weight by the band. Mm -hmm. And those yeah. two notes okay. together, okay. the way they sit across a chord okay. is wouldn't be your first thought. Mm -hmm. But okay. if you add to that pedaling notes, mm -hmm. and then you add harmonies that are descending and ascending at the same time, so they're crossing over in the mm -hmm. field, you start to get some really cool shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Herb had a client that was really good at that. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you call it. Okay, yeah. thank you for clarifying that yeah. for me. When you're, when you're putting together a part, what influences you? to do certain things harmony-wise? Is it just your taste, or are you trying to create a, 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 a something happen that's extraordinary in the chorus, or, you, or do you tend to repeat yourself? I mean... Um, depending on the arrangement, I'll build across, you know, I find that Spotify dictates to us all a little bit, for better or for worse. So if you want to grab people and you don't want them to skip, take that fantastic middle, but the bridge section that you thought was just a beautiful breakdown, mm -hmm. and put it at the front of the song. So you're allowing a different, you know, you're diff a, a different way into a song mm -hmm. that's from left. It's not. I think Lord did, did that very well with mm -hmm. Royals. You know, mm -hmm. she starts out Absolutely. with it. It's, it's just vocals. It's and it's very much concentrated around that. So on a record like uh, Lord Royals, yeah. the way that that's um, used just to create moments of rhythmic tension and just and harmonic tension, that's wonderful to me. So. Herb mentioned, or Herb started off the show an interview with uh, talking about your production chops. When you enter a production and you get to the chorus, are you pre, are you, and you have that singer sing the, the melody, are, are you thinking harmonies at that time and have the singer sing to those harmonies in your head, or do you place them on the singer later? I, I'll do the, actually, that's a good point from just overall in terms of the, my approach to production is probably different from other people in that I was a sing very much a singer first. Mm -hmm. And for me... You're an artist. Yeah, I was an artist. Um, ben, Ben's brother. Ben's brother. So right. that was... that Being in a studio and being uncomfortable behind a microphone, yeah. or in front of a microphone, I should say, first, yeah. and realizing how to make myself comfortable in front of a microphone and, and concentrate on getting an, a superb vocal out of anybody mm -hmm. was, has always been a focus for me because I remember how awkward I felt mm -hmm 
worried about tuning, worried about performance, worried about all of these things. And I try and take as many of those variables out of it yeah. and keep it fun. If it becomes stressful, there's something's wrong. Something's in, in, the, in the studio. <laughs> you cr- I learned that <laughs> from Tony Visconti. Our actually. meeting before we started oh, really? the show. <laughs> no, but it was. I just the idea that you you know I saw um, Tony Visconti was the uh, same studio I was in with the, the Alessi brothers. Yeah. Um, I'm only dropping names because we're in the one place that I know That's people okay. will enjoy that. Yeah, absolutely, you know, please. Sat in, I was lucky enough to sit in on a session with him and I sat down, in a situation like this mm-hmm. at the village, I sat down between the back of the board and the speaker so that he couldn't see me and the band couldn't see me. He was recording. Um, I used to love that spot. Yeah, it's yeah, great it's because you can hide, you can, you're still underneath the big ones. And, yeah. and I saw him put this, this session together. It was the Dandy Warhols. Mm. Uh, they were doing a cover of Ohio for um, the Neil Young record. Sure. And he had everything set out way before they were in the room. Everything was set out so that if they sat down at something and performed at it, they could just do it. Same thing with the vocal. He had the booth all lit up, other mics placed. He had a, his far mics as well in the back of the room in the corners, and he just let people perform it. Mm. Uh, and it was interesting to see how comfortable he wanted to make the musicians mm-hmm. just to do their thing. Mm-hmm. And when it came to vocal, when it comes to vocal performances, if I'm, if I'm getting into take seven, right, then something Something's hasn't off. quite just yet hit. You yeah. know, like for me, I try. And, and stick to three or four main lead vocals. Mm-hmm. And then that allows me, and I, I really will just build the lead vocal out to the point where I'm superbly happy with it before I even worry about the rest of the production, right. honestly. Right. And then I build up from there. So right. everything works around the vocal being compelling. So Perfect. making sure it stays fun mm-hmm. is for me the easiest way to do it, which is to distract them, distract a vocalist. Make, to be honest, I, I, I think I flatter vocalists um, subconsciously at least three or four times mm. in the first five minutes of doing anything so that they feel comfortable. And I will never play a vocal back to anybody, mm. even for a second, mm. until oh, cool. I've got my chain on it, my my my, oh, okay. my set, and I've listened in my head before I even play them a, a note. Because oh, okay. I don't want them to go, I don't want to put them off at any stage before they've created what I think will be the thing. Because I think people's egos are very fragile. And I think that I'm very lucky in that I write, I tend to write the song. And I, if I'm very lucky, and I have been so far, we've been good, is that I try to get a lead vocal the day we finish writing the song. So you get it right. I try then. to. Gotcha. Because there's a certain magic in, in, in capturing a lead with the person you've written with it, uh, the song with there and then, right, then. which it's is very hard to recreate. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah. if it's a different situation where I'm going in with Jennifer Hudson and we've sure. the song's been written and we did it, to, to, but we want to go back and then it's a different situation. But again, I'm focusing 100% on making sure that she's comfortable. Right. And if, if I'm, I'm telling her why, I want a different take. Right. Right. I'm going to say, listen, that was amazing. It's not to, you know, right. I'll say that was killer. I just wanted a variation on a couple of bits here and mm-hmm. bits there. Mm-hmm. And I'll say, we've got it. And the other thing I use, I know I'm giving it away is, it doesn't matter whether how good that first take was. I will say, to be honest, I think we probably got 70% of the lead in that first take. It was ridiculous. Because mm-hmm. then they just go, oh, really? they relax. <laughs> and I say, can you hear it? And I say, no, no, mate, it's going to be insane. Mm. Let's just, now let's just do a few for fun. And and that's, that's a cool technique. I never thought of well, that. Well, just because it, everybody, as soon as everybody relaxes, for a start, they allow themselves to refocus without thinking too hard. Right. If you're thinking about what you're doing, you're not performing too hard, you know what I mean? You you want to perform something and you want to deliver, then you're going to concentrate on, if someone says to you, which someone said to me the first time I was, he was like, just do it as if you were in front of 50,000 people, you're going to freak out, you're going to wet your pants and you're going to sing something out of tune. So I just say, Man, I think we're already there. Yeah. Just you're obviously this is obviously what you're born to do. Just enjoy. It. Well, I think we should go do vocals with him. <laughs> yeah. But also, I might disagree with that because it, it's harder. Back when I used to tour, it's harder for me to play in front of ten people than fifty thousand. I, I, oh yeah, no. I, but when I play in front of fifty thousand, I swear. I can find the guy, the ten guys in the audience that hate me. I, I, I'm immediately drawn <laughs> to can. them and watch them. I don't know how that is. <laughs> Maybe it's all fifty thousand hate me, and I just didn't realize that. But I think there's something wonderful about being able to turn the game on. Yeah. Don't get me wrong with that. Yeah. But but the idea that you're performing in front of anybody when you're creating that thing for me it, as a vocalist, mm-hmm. I think most vocalists 
are worried about their pitch. Yeah. They're worried about hitting yeah. it. Yeah. They're worried about all those right. things. Right. You know. yeah. Yeah. I, I think, and this is just my opinion, I could be wrong. I think that structure and boundaries are the enemy of creativity. And, and when you walk into a studio, it's nothing but structures and boundaries. And, and any of those you can remove, you're going to have a, a, a more creative session. For sure. Uh, whether you're singing or whether you're mixing or whatever, it's creativity is a, is a fickle thing. Well, that's the other thing is that when you're sitting there in a vocal session, one thing I try to avoid is being in a different room from the person I'm in with. Mm. I know, you know, everyone says to me, why don't you, I don't need a booth. I need a quiet room mm -hmm. and a good mic mm -hmm. and, um, and to, to have a two sets of headphones. Mm -hmm. Much Very happier good. there than I am going, did you get? You know get, who else is like that? Get, who's that? Dr. Dre. Right. I want to be in the room. The vocalist is right here. I didn't yeah. know that. He's at the board, and the vocalist is literally right here. Yeah. I didn't know that. I yep. just, I mean, you know, plenty of sessions where, where I'm in that, in that situation, I'll try and alleviate all of the barriers. As you said, structure, you know, the, the, the rules, and, and I prefer to keep it very simple. The other mm -hmm. thing I try and do is avoid, is avoid as much hardware on the way in on a vocal as possible. Mm -hmm. I'll choose a good mic. and some of the best vocals, like mo I would say 70% of the best mo vocals I've ever got in terms of the clarity, the, the just the, the, the signal, uh -huh. have been mic Pro Tools with a lead in between. Uh, what mic do you like? Uh, for pop, I like manly mics. I think they're very, very well put together. Mm -hmm. They have a, a good crisp top the end. The reference. The reference. I don't. Mm -hmm. the, the gold one is too is too too crispy for me. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. want to be taking stuff out of a vocal. Mm -hmm. I want to be, you know, I yeah. want it to be there and. Mm -hmm. So I love that. Good. Or, I mean, I, a lot of people ask because they, I work with, and I go and sit in with people, and people ask questions when they come to the village, whether it's the interns or other people. I can't afford that. What can I do? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, two tricks. Guitar Center will hate me for saying it, but go and buy a microphone, try it, and then bring it back mm -hmm. <laughs> a month later. Yeah. If you shouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. uh, great mics. Cheap mics, TLM 103 never let me down. The Neumann yeah. TLM 103 is a great mic. Mm -hmm. Plenty of presence and a great response mm -hmm. that the, you know, the 87 has, but it's too expensive mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So for me, you know, and then the SM7 is great. If you're I was on about a, to say, I'm a great big fan of the SM7. SM7 is killer. You're sitting on it. You can sit anywhere. You can be on a writing camp in, in the middle of nowhere, right. and there's stuff going on left and right of you, and it's noisy outside. But that SM7 is right there, and it right gets there. the vocal out of you. Did you work with Jennifer Hudson? You did, I did, did. Yeah. What was that like? Great. She's amazing. She, she's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Was it easy or was it harder because she, like sometimes with me when I was doing a lot of tracking, I'd work with a, a great singer and it was harder to work with a great singer than a poor singer because the great singers felt they had to be great. <laughs> right. And again, try and, try and keep it, I just kept it really light and she's wonderful. I was lucky enough to, the first day I wrote with, worked with her, we wrote the song oh, wow. and we worked on, we worked on a song that I'd started and we finished up. Uh, same thing with Rag and Bowman with Rory. Mm -hmm. I brought in, you know, song. I mean, I got that vocal out of him the first day we, we with the day we wrote that that vocal was wow. there on the day. So I was lucky that we already so had Rag something and going. His real name is Rory. Rory. Tell, if you see him, tell me. I'm a big fan. If, if it I will do. Yeah, for him, sure. I'm when he comes through fan. town, you guys should. He should oh, come yeah, see. Oh yeah, I'd love to see him. Yeah, he's a t honestly a lovely, lovely guy. He's a yeah. sweetheart. He's yeah. also six foot six and, and is he really? He's absolutely yeah. built like a tank. So wow. he's. Well, I've changed the subject and destroyed the floor of the of the show. Did you subconsciously do that song at 75 beats per minute because of the hip hop tempo? Well, no, it's a funny story about that song because they also changed the timing and the tuning of it. Oh, they they it flipped flat, it down a right little bit. Now, yeah, it? yeah, it's it's a little out. You'll notice if you put that against any, yeah. it doesn't. It's not in tune with anything. Oh, so they why, they tuned okay. it out a little. Yeah, yeah. but they, it was very much written on on that with that in mind. That stomp. Yeah. So, uh, so, oh wow, oh, yeah. I guess the one right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so sure. let me go back to the production side because we focus on vocals. So when you're producing music, are you in the box? Are you using live musicians? Is it? It varies, but I, um, for the writing process, I'm very much, it's a piano, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a guitar, and it's Pro Tools, and that's it. Well, sometimes, depending on the session, obviously, if I'm doing, but I love to go in, I have a piano at home that I sit at if, I, if I'm trying to come up with something ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in a room with, particularly for pop, I mean, I, you know, that's, as I said, the lovely thing about LA mm -hmm. is that, for example, last week, I was working with a Jamaican artist and we were doing a reggae record. Then I was working on a, on a, a dance record. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then it was a soulful song, which was quite similar, and there's a singer-songwriter. So you, I think you have to just, 
certainly in, in the way I work, and it, it varies from every, you know, from person to person. I'm half the guys who do great track are just insanely good at that, and they'll put something together fast enough for it right. not to disturb the flow. Right, for right. me, to, to keep the flow going, I'm gonna sit down and play a piano or a guitar mm -hmm. to get us cracking. Mm -hmm. What do you use to remember your ideas when you're not in front of a computer? Like say you're at the dinner and you get an idea. How do you Telephone. preserve, all songwriters have methods to do that. How do you do that? Phones, I'm afraid. Phones, but I very, I really, I, I can't. I'm, I'm a typical male. I can't really think of more than one thing at once for any particularly well. <laughs> so if I'm out at dinner, I'm doing it. I'm usually distracted, and it's not doesn't. You know, if I'm having an idea, it'll be in the shower, yeah, yeah. in the restroom. Mm -hmm. Something. By the way, songwriting wise, if you're having a, if you're stuck on anything, just go to the restroom. You usually find choruses in toilets. Number one I don't or know number why. two. Uh, depends. Depends on how good it is. <laughs> depends on the gravitas of the, of the melody you're, you're looking for. That's a good okay. Uh, this could be the first show that has. has well, but when you aren't you curious? I mean, no, no, I was. You were. If you need, if you need longer to, to sketch your out, idea I mean, out, maybe you have to stay there a little longer. There's a lot of things that happen that move the world literally in the bathroom. <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, but absolutely. it's a good place to find inspiration. I found yeah, it, it, that is absolutely true. Uh, my assistant Nico wanted to know. Um, has the technology that we have today made it easier to be a songwriter or has it just made no difference? It's made it easier to be an, a songwriter because everyone can be a songwriter in that yeah, sense. Like but you learn competition. You know, there's that expression about 10,000 hours and needing to, yeah, I, th yeah. I think I figured it out the other day that it's taken me 30, 35,000 hours mm. to get to this point. And I'm only in the last four or five years really having, I've had a few in the past and thankfully and mm -hmm. I'm, whatever. But to a point where I'm comfortable and confident enough to, to say that I know structures well enough to, to sit down and feel great about writing songs and feel good about at least being in a room and talk about it right. with any level of expertise, right. then uh, time right. is Absolutely. everything. You're just as, you know. You to, well, you know what I think is incredible? A friend of mine, a collaborator, mentioned it to me the other day. You think back to a time when people wrote music on paper. Yeah. Unbelievable. And heard all of it in yeah, their heads. In their heads. Bef and the first time they heard it live was yeah. when it was performed properly in yeah. front of them as an orchestra. Yeah, yeah. Now that is extraordinary uh, to me. When I was a little kid, I, uh, in my t early teens, I, I'd, I'd, do, I'd be in the studio with somebody and, and they'd say, hey, what would you do here? And I'd, I'd create this part and that record would do real well. And I didn't think I wrote on it because I thought being a writer meant that you wrote notes on paper. Right, and rather than just playing the parts. That me a little bit. Well, <laughs> you made, you, you'd, have, you'd have made a bunch more money. <laughs> well, I'm not a songwriter, really. I, I, I'm not a songwriter, so it didn't matter. But, um. how, how, how much does a good publisher play into uh, when you question. get to a point as a writer that that's even a need? Because obviously publishing is important no matter what. For sure. What goes into your selection process? Them calling you, you calling them, you observing them? Uh, I think publishers are an amazing part of, the, of a huge puzzle. Yeah. And it, you, it could be, you're looking at it and like anything, if they happen to have that, made that phone call to that artist or that, that label that puts you in the room. For example, amazing. Rag and Bone Man. Yeah. My, the new guy at my publishing company in the UK mm. said, I think you should go and sit with this a &R guy at Columbia Records in London, because he's got an artist I think you'd be great with. Mm -hmm. He introduced me to the, I went and heard a couple of songs and I was like, I know exactly which song, because I'd already started the Bones to Human over here. Ah. I said, I know who this singer is, is it, right. you know, and right. that, so the publisher was absolutely- In Instrumental. Instrumental. Yep, yep. On well, other times, you're still cursing. You're with, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Yep. He's just joined. Yeah, let's do yeah. a shout out to Donna Cassane. Yeah. Donna, Donna's Donna. killing it. Also, Ali Tamposi is on yeah. the same was yeah. on the same right. roster. Right. It's good yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, yes, I'm ready. Uh, ah. uh, okay. Batter's box. Are you ready for this? I don't know. We'll uh, find out in a minute. I think, possibly, <laughs> since you're from London, think cricket. Yes. Okay. Just think cricket. Just the wicket and smack and go. Think wickets. Wickets. Stick it okay. wickets. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, roll. So, so let's do it. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. Key. Ooh, I was going to say lock, but uh, key. Uh, I like that. E flat. Okay. Okay, that was wrong. <laughs> Inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> He's subtle, as you can see. Inspiration. Uh, um, Sam Cook. Ooh. Harmonies. The Eagles. John Lennon. 
uh, everybody says imagine, but I'm not going to say imagine. I'm going to say Bill Martin. Ooh. Ooh. He's good, Herb. Mm -hmm. Collaborations. Aretha Franklin. Wish list. Mm. Tempo. 75. <laughs> <laughs> Chords. Uh, no, split minor to major. Okay. Ooh. He's showing off now. Mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's a lot. That's one of my favorite songwriting tricks. Sorry, okay. Love it. demos. No such thing. Should I quit? Okay, I'll, 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 for the sake of the show, I'll keep going. Genre. Blues. While you're in the restroom, if your studio caught fire, what <laughs> one piece of gear would you rescue? My mic. Ooh. Ah. Okay, I lost. <laughs> Well, I don't even know how you win. How do you win? Nobody wins, right? Okay. But you, you win. It's where I'm on. I've never won one, and there's a reason for that. Much continued success. Thank uh, you. It's good to see good guys win. Thank you. You know, and and, um, and a lot of times, really, the guys at the top and the ladies at the top are often really nice people. I find that yeah. more and more. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's along the way where you run into the bumps and stuff. Uh, Can I just good. say thank you so, so much for having me on there? Because this is, I love it. It's um, a real privilege. Oh, no, thank it, you. It, thank it's, you. A, it's a Our pleasure. pleasure. Um, Dave, take us home. Okay. Man, one of the things I always wish I could do was be a songwriter, and I can't. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>